year. Um, we have a two-year-old that has a published poem at Capitol Stationers. And we have 92-year-old. Um, wow. So, and every age in between. And we have school kids, and we have college kids, and, and seniors. We just have a lot of different voices, a lot of different programs, and it's really great that you're here tonight. Um, Toll City uh, happens because we have sponsors. Vermont Humanities Council, Vermont College of Fine Arts, uh, Hunger Mountain Co-op, National Life Group Foundation, and the po ah, Poetry Society of Vermont. I have trouble saying that two out of three times. Um, and George Longenecker is the president of the Poetry Society of Vermont. I'm glad that he's here. He is also on the Palm City Planning Team, which makes my life much easier. Um, and so tonight's program, Native Music and Poetry, um, is with two very special people. Um, Brian Blanchett and Roman Luto are citizens of the Melanican Band of the Kusa Abenaki. Luto has been writing poetry for about 25 years, and he says, My poems are about my proud path I walk being native. That also includes nature at times and very personal writing. Brian Blanchett, a Berkeley College of Music alum and a member of Black Hawk Singers, started powwow drumming in 1996 and began writing songs in Abenaki in 1998. Beautiful music and Abenaki heritage combined to create one of New England's most original artists. So we will have music, and then we'll have poetry, and then back to music and back to poetry. And at the end, um, we would love to hear comments, questions, and conversation. So please help me welcome Brian and Robert. I have my friends. Um, my name is uh, Strike Twice, uh, and we're the uh, little Winooski flows along the mountains of stone that would be God Granite Hill. Uh, that's where I live. That, that's, that's my land. That's my place. This is, a, this is a song that was first written uh, for the Black Hawk Singers, and uh, we literally played this on a, uh, on a picnic table uh, before the first time we played it in public at a, at a, really, at a big Pablo in New Hampshire, so, um, and I ported this over to guitar. This is Kwai'i, this, this is a greeting song. Thank you. 
So a few years back, um, Black Hawk Singers were invited uh, to do to provide um, music relief for a, a symposium at Dartmouth College on uh, sacred water, and we had just learned that uh, one of the schools um, had tested a hundred times higher for uranium than the federal uh, government uh, allowed, and we were hearing a bunch of different things like that to the point where. One of the women that was there it was her son. He told her, hey, don't, don't drink the water at the school. And her eight-year-old son came home and said, I'm sorry, mommy, but I was thirsty today. So I got to hear the VP of the Navajo Nation ask uh, the, the, a woman who was putting on the event, the symposium, um, he said, who are the Abenaki? You know, we get to hear that a lot, right? And she had just received her doctorate uh, from Dartmouth College on colonialism. So who better to be speaking about this? And she said that uh, she spoke about the resolve of the, of the Abenaki people. So I'm going to do a, uh, a take on a Tom Petty tune. This is I Won't Back Down. And I, I translated the, uh, the chorus into the Abenaki language just to put her own little twist on it. <coughs>
Leave that last squad. So, you know, it's, it's kind of funny how, you know, somebody had to explain uh, who we are, right? Um, so, our language is part of the bigger dialect, part of the Algonquin dialect, and we actually, uh, for a landmass, um, we took over the biggest map of uh, the Western Hemisphere. So Pocahontas would have been speaking Algonquin all the way across the Pacific Ocean with the Cree and the Inuit. And right now, um, we still have, so I talk sometimes when I sing uh, the Tom Petty tune, I say, you know, most tribes had 20 years worth of war. We, we had 100 and hundreds of years of oppression, but we still have our language. Most people don't fully speak it, but there are still some people that have learned it. It's been passed down from father to son, and Jesse Bruchak, a uh, great teacher of the language, actually taught his son. So his son's first language in, in, in New York was Abenaki. And when he turned four and he was getting ready to go to kindergarten, they started speaking English to him. And uh, now his girlfriend is going to have a granddaughter, and uh, he'll be doing the same thing uh, with the granddaughter. But there's a little subcult of us that are really working with the language, and we're not true speakers of the language, but that line that you heard me say, that's not something I wrote out, and you know, it's, it's from memory, it's from what I know. Um, this is a, a translation from a, 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 Tom, Pitt, uh, from a uh, Tom Rush song. This is a uh, Pedigree Country, and it, it, uh, my name came up on the Facebook post on the, on the leaving page. And I'm like, well, what's up with this? So I, I, I translated it, uh, recorded it, and passed it on uh, to Tom Rush, who, uh, who likes it. But this is, uh, this is Merrimack County, uh, AKA Pedigree Country.
too much, but um, <laughs> this next one, um, Don Stevens, you put out a post on Facebook about saying prayers to the elders last year. As I was, uh, you know, living in that that uh, bought a foreclosure in Granville that I'm working on, so I'm living in a mess, no TV. Got a couple of young kittens that I rescued, and they're laying in my lap, and I've got a glass of wine next to me, and uh, I'm reading the post. And uh, this next song came to mind. This, this is prayers for my elders. This one's in, in English, but uh, as my friend Gali said, write some songs, you know, uh, about contemporary Native life and so.
Unlike Brian and, and several of my brothers and sisters, I, I do not speak very much in my native language. But I will say, by the way, which is welcome or good evening or uh, hello. Uh, I have this all planned out and, and my mind will blank now. <laughs> I am uh, a proud citizen of the Nalhegan band of the Kusak Abenaki. Nalhegan is the place where the, food, uh, the wooden traps are made. Kusak is people that live in the pines and the Abnaki are we who see the sunlight first. So we are known as the people that make the traps, that live in the pines, who see the sunlight first. As Rachel said, I started writing probably about 25 or 30 years ago, somewhere in between. My wife was my inspiration. I had lost two friends and my mother-in-law, all within a short period of time. And I wanted to do something to honor them and I didn't want to make a little monument or memorial because eventually that would fall in disrepair. So she suggested maybe I write a story about each. Well, I'm not really a story writer, even though my stories probably tell, poems tell a story. So she reminded me that my <coughs> father's mother, my grandmother, wrote poetry, and some of her poems were on display down in the uh, chapel years ago. So my first poem that I did was, was for these three people, and, and because it's so personal, I will not read that one. But I had written several, and <laughs> I cast, I'm sorry. I had written several, and, and a good friend of mine who lived in New Jersey at the time asked if she could borrow my poems and take them home and read, so I let her take them. And a couple weeks later, she sent them back, and she had put them into a book form for me. And she had titled it The Reflections of Red Hawk, Red Hawk being my, my native name, Thoughts of a Native Man. And so in the front of the book, she wrote a little story about me, I guess. And I, I'd like to share that with you. It might, might help you understand a little bit more who I am and how I write. So she says, Red Hawk, the reflections shared on these pages are a glimpse of daily events, easier or hard, that are, have occurred in one man's life. Red Hawk is a Native American of Abenaki heritage who resides in the state of Vermont. He works hard, dances when he drums, laughs, he, laughs easily, and walks with an open heart. He is a son, a brother, a husband, a father, and a grandfather. Keeping in the oral tradition of telling a story without telling all the story, the background of these reflections are not shared. Red Hawk leaves it to the reader or the listener to glimpse the events that is found in the spaces between the words. In this way, we take from each page what is needed and we learn or remember. These shared thoughts contain universal feelings. We can find connections from whatever ethnic heritage we descend. So, my first one I call my dreams, and I try not to be political, sometimes I might throw in a little bit that, that might sound that way, but it's mostly what is in my heart that I write about, the path that I've been on for close to 50 years. I started in my early 20s, I'll be 73 in June, so <clears throat> anyway. My dream. I had a dream the other night. I dreamt our people were not all right. I asked Creator, what shall I do? He said, choose a path and I will walk with you. I chose a path and walked not alone, for others walked with me into the unknown. We did not run. We stand and fight in hopes our people will be all right. I learned traditions, customs, and songs, so all these can be carried on. The old ways must come back <clears throat> to help our children on the right track. For those who are yet to come, our work here is far from done. For time is short, the end is near. Creator tells us not to fear. If your path is straight and your words are true, Creator will always walk with you. That was the second poem. <clears throat> can everybody hear me 
okay? Mm -hmm. I woke one gray dark day and did not see beauty in this day. I did not hear the small birds sing or see the deer who stopped to eat. I did not look to see the goose or hear the cry of a lonely moose. I did not feel the sun morning rays or the gentle rain to wash away. I did not feel the breeze that blew or the clouds above as the day was through. As nighttime fell and day was done, I sat up and wondered what was wrong. Did I not see these things before as I stood and looked out my door? I closed my eyes as day was done and heard a voice from up above. Slow down, my friend, I heard him say, for tomorrow is another day. For beauty is but all around. Just take your time and slow your life down. <laughs> point in my life and seemed like I had been pulled in many different directions. <clears throat> Sometimes these words come to me and I can sit down and write a poem in just a matter of minutes. Sometimes it takes, I start one and it might take a few months before I finish it. And then sometimes I feel like I am an instrument for the ones that came before me, for those that voices that still need to be heard. So I try to do my best for them as well as for myself. People sometimes come to me and say, ah, I got a title, can I give it to you and you can write a poem about it? <laughs> so a good friend of mine who was a school teacher and she had all our children through all the, all the years that they were in school came to me one day and she said, you know, Roland, she said, I, I walk along the wood lines and, and the river banks and she said, down country roads. <clears throat> and she said, I see these little birds nest all over the place. And she said, uh, if I give you a title, can you, can you write me a poem? So I said, well, I'll try. So she said, how about cradles in the wind? So I said, okay. So it goes, cradles in the wind, high up in the tree, empty, not, empty to the world now, swinging so free. Once filled with little life in days gone by, high up in the treetops, up near Father's sky. These cradles hold a lesson of how life begins anew. With each new season passing, our answers will come through. These cradles tell a story with each new passing day of love and kindness and caring. These cradles show the way. Cradles in the wind, we see them every day. As we walk our path of life, these cradles lead the way. As, the, as the, my wife, my wife dropped, crossed over seven years ago from cancer. So, but I know she's with me here tonight because she was my inspiration and she pushed me on and, and even Towards the last of her life, she she said, "Don't forget, you got to keep writing." There was a, a long time from the time she passed until just recently, I started writing again. I called this one a visit. The hawk came to to visit me one day and stayed not long, then flew away. He sat in my tree and just looked around, not leaving the tree to fly to the ground. He sat and looked at each. He sat and we looked at each other that day, and I wondered why he came my way. Was it a message or sign he was given to me? Who should I ask or who should I see? And my answer came through so loud and clear as the hawk took off and left me here. He was free to fly, he was free to go. He came back two more times on two different days. He sat in my tree just looking at me. He has not returned in quite a long time. Perhaps the last was the end of the line. I know he's my friend. I felt it that day when my friend just up and flew away. He was a little, little hawk. And my, my tree is probably uh, about from here to that post over there out my front window. He sat there and we, we looked at him. I, I have a picture of him somewhere. I took a picture. He just sat there and posed. 
I was uh, like Brian, I was on a native drum doing the powwow circuit for, for many years. I, I did it for like 12 or 15 years. I sat on two different drums. And the drum is something very special to me. When I'm, when I'm drumming and sitting on a drum, <clears throat> I am at total peace with myself. And I, I drum for those that came before me that didn't have the chance for, for different reasons throughout our history, you know, and, and a lot of our people went into hiding for, for those particular reasons. And that's something political, and I'm not going to get into that. But I titled this one The Drum. And, and you'll notice I try to make my words rhyme, but they all don't rhyme all the time. And I don't go back through and try to change it so it sounds, it, they come out the way they're supposed to come out. And uh, so that's the way I put them down. So this is called The Drum. A piece of hide, a piece of wood, a song from your heart that will make all feel good. To own a drum is a disgrace, for no one can own that sacred space. To sit on the drum is the highest grace, but to do it wrong is total disgrace. To feel the beat is to feel her heart, for Mother Earth is always a part. Sometimes we get, forget what the drum is about. She needs to be honored, there is no doubt. It's not for performing or to show off and sing, it's not for power or material things. It's for teaching and learning and respecting and pride. It's more than wood, it's more than hide. It's bringing together, not tearing apart. It's looking at others, not with your eyes, but with your heart. If one who sits on the drum cannot do these things, then the drum for them is no place to be. Like I said, the, the drum is something very special to me. I, I hold a lot of respect for it. I sound a little political. It's, it's really not. <laughs> it's okay. I know it's okay. I call it the view. But I climbed I climbed a hill the other day and looked over this piece of clay. I looked through the eastern door and saw it as it was before. The air was so light and sweet, and Mother Earth felt good below below my feet, and all the rest was like a dream, the water was so pure and clean. I sat and looked at it today and wondered why it went away. The water is not fit to drink and the air has a terrible stink. We put all kinds of things into Mother Earth and wonder why there's no rebirth. Did I do this? Was I a part? This question eats at my heart. If all of us would try a little more, I'm sure we could find a simple cure to bring back water, clean and pure, and the air as it was before. And Mother Earth as she should be to feel so good below my feet. <clears throat> I was at a powwow one time sitting on, on our drum, and at the particular drum I sat on, and, and, and there's mixed feelings on this because some people will allow women on their drum, other, others won't. The drum I was on was, was an all-male drum, and the women stood behind us and they rattled with their rattles. And one of the women dropped her rattle on the ground and it broke, and she said, oh my God, she said, I can't rattle it today, my, my rattle is broken. And, and so I, Sat there and I thought, you know, while we were drumming, you know, your mind goes crazy sometimes. And, and then uh, the rattle's not broken. So I, I, I wrote a poem about it. It's called Broken Rattles. Broken Rattles. And, and this woman busted out into tears. I mean, this was a special rattle to her. So it says Broken Rattles, crying tears, broken spirits of yesteryears. Broken promises and broken dreams, all hope is gone, or so it seems. A rattle tells a story of how life used to be, a once proud people just wanting to be free. The rattle speaks of spirits, promises, and dreams, of family ties and happy times and all that's in between. A rattle is never broken, its spirit still lives on. It finds a way of showing us that things are never gone. For life is what we make of it, 
and rattles show us how by picking up a broken one and listening to its sound. My wife and I used to do a lot of things. Actually, we did everything together. Except when I went to work, she had to stay home and raise the kids. But uh, <clears throat> whenever we got a chance and, and we had five children, and people would be willing to watch the kids who sneak off for a few days or a week or whatever. And we'd go to Maine or, or whatever. So anyway, I sat down one day and I wrote this for her. It's called Our Love. We walked, walked the rocky shores of Maine, walked through meadows simple and plain. We've climbed up mountains to their peaks. We've done it all and never had to speak. We raised a family with nothing coming in and watched them grow from small little kids. We did what we always thought was right and never once got into a fight. You've touched my heart and I've seen your soul from our young days to as we grow old. We've always been true without a doubt and never once had a falling out. I trusted you as you trusted me and that's the way our love would always be. And one fine day as our lives will part and leave the other with a broken heart, remember that <clears throat> one will always wait on the other side until we both meet again in the sweet by and by, to once again walk the rocky shores of Maine and, mount <clears throat> and meadows simple and plain, to climb mountains to their peak, and I'll hold you in my arms for all eternity. I didn't know if I was going to do it. <laughs> This one I call Mother Earth. Mother Earth is something special because she gives us everything we need. She gives us our clothing, our, our food, uh, whatever we need, it's, it's always there for us to, to take. And we don't take but what we leave something in return. So I always, if, if I pick up a stone or, or something, I always leave a pinch of tobacco to, to repay what I've taken. For everything is, is has a spirit, and that spirit must live on. Anyway, Mother Earth. The Earth is our mother. She gives us our needs. I've walked in her beauty, and I've seen her great deeds. I've seen her great forests and climbed her tall peaks. I've walked through her meadows and valleys with ease. I've swam in her rivers and drank from her lakes. I've seen her great oceans and felt their great waves. I've seen her small creatures and seen their, her great beast. I've seen her birds fly and the crawlers below. This is her love, for this I should know. Each day I give thanks for all that she gives, and I thank the Creator for allowing me to live upon this place we call Mother Earth. I was sitting on, on my back deck one day with my wife and she was drinking her coffee and smoking her cigarette and, and I was just gazing around and looking at the world and I happened to look up at the sky and the sky was such a beautiful, brilliant blue. So I spoke out loud and I said, I wonder why the sky is blue, so blue. And she put down her cigarette and she looked at me and she said, well, there's, there's your next poem. And I said, what do you mean? And she said, ah, you wonder, so wonder. So I called it wonder. I said, I wonder why the sky is blue and wonder why they say water is too. I wonder why water is wet and wonder why we worry and fret. I wonder why up is not down and wonder what makes a circle round. I wonder why we kill for peace and look for problems from the east. I wonder why the clouds don't fall, but rain and snow will all day long. I wonder where do the breezes come and wonder where they go when they are done. I wonder why the moon will light up the night sky 
and why governments will tell their people lies. I wonder why the sun's so hot, and wonder what makes a mountain top. I wonder now if I should stop. <laughs> and then I put a little footnote on the bottom and it says, to wonder is to question, to question is to learn, to learn is to know, and to know is to wonder. <laughs> I guess I've got a few more minutes. I'm trying to stretch it out. <laughs> You're fine. <clears throat> I have a, a very dear friend that lives way up in northern Maine. <clears throat> and a lot of times I go to him when I need questions answered. And uh, he, he was originally from. Canada and he, they sold their house there and they, they moved up over to northern Maine and he bought something like 100 or 150 acres of land and they cut down the trees and they built their home out of there and everything. And he was out exploring his land one day and he, he came across these three huge rocks. One was in the north, one was in the east, and the other one was in the south. And so when I went up there, he said, I got to show you this. So he took me up to these rocks. And my, my daughter was going through some problems at the time, some health problems at the time. And so he said, you know, you got to sit here in the West and uh, talk to these rocks. And, and they'll hear your prayers and, and uh, everything will be all right. So uh, he called them the grandfathers. Which they are because they're they're older than time. So I called my poem the grandfathers. <clears throat> These grandfathers sit in their own special place, calling out to the people of the human race, to give them their hurts, prayers, dreams, and their hopes, and to give them to and to give them to ease what bothers us most. I've been to these rocks to ask them for help. And each time I've left, I've left a part of myself. The first time was for my daughter, who was facing a terrible fate. The next time was for my granddaughters, <clears throat> that they would be born okay. These grandfathers have listened and heard my sad plea, and each time I've asked, they have answered me. I've been there many times in my mind, when things aren't going good, but for guidance from time to time. I've also been there to just sit and think and to listen to what these grandfathers have to say. Keep walking your path, keep walking it straight, for these grandfathers are with you in your native faith. I, I follow my native faith. I was born and raised Catholic, but I get more, more substance out of my, my native faith than I do the, the religious faiths and, and I walk in two worlds and that's kind of difficult because I walk in my native world but I also walk in the white man's world I, I don't mean to but maybe I think you know what I mean <laughs> I'm, I'm, not, I'm, I'm certainly not trying to offend anybody <clears throat> I was uh, traveling down the road one day with a good friend of mine and and he said, you know, these roads that were on, these were all Indian paths at one time. And they just put black top over them and called them a highway. <laughs> so I said, well, okay. So I got home and I got to thinking about what he had said and, and it made sense. I mean, our people were here 10,000 years before anybody else were and they didn't have highways to ride on and walk on and everything else. So they, they made their own paths. And when we came along, we just increased those paths and, and made them bigger and wider. And so I called it Indian Roads. Indian Roads, they lead all from here to take me to places I long to be near. Indian Roads, which one do I take? What do I want and what places do I see? My ancestors traveled the waters and paths, 
It took them to places they thought would last. As time went by and those paths turned to roads, these native people no longer did roam. Indian roads from east to west, Indian roads, which ones are the best? I've traveled these roads all through the year in hopes of finding a place that is so dear. And what do I find as I travel along? These roads always lead me to the place I belong. I, uh, I'd like to read this one. I, I wrote this one just uh, a few days ago. We have a place over in the eastern part of the state that is very sacred to the Abenaki people. It's a <clears throat> place called Brunswick Springs. I don't know if you people have heard of it or not. If you haven't, you can Google it. Uh, it's on the banks of the Connecticut River. And there's a, there's a story behind it. It's, and it's protected by our ancestors and the spirits that, that uh, roam the land there. And uh, the story, part of the story goes that, that the water that flows there will never be, be used for any profit. So I call this our sacred springs. There is a place I like to go, a place where seven different waters flow, a place that brings me lots of peace, high above the river facing east, spirit protected day and night. Keeping it, safe, keeping it sacred for what is, that is right. If you haven't been there, then you should go to see the beauty and watch them flow. Respect is all we ask of you, for it's always the right thing to do. As I said, this is a very sacred place to the Abenaki people. Almost Brian's turn to come back. Run out of things to You can come on up, Brian. Okay, thank you. I'd just like to introduce my chief, Chief Don Stevens from the. Uh, Don is our our go-to man. He does so much for the people of, of all our people here in Vermont of all Adnaki. He, he doesn't just take care of Nohegan. He does it for all of us. And uh, we owe him a great deal of debt. You went out of love, Owen. You don't owe me anything. This is a this is a song that was inspired uh, from uh, some artwork by a friend of mine down at White River uh, uh, for the last Black Hawk uh, CD we call, called Moon Hawk. It's written by a friend of mine named Jordan Shaw, who uh, sings with us the Black Hawk singers, and uh, he has a friend uh, named Tony Moonhawk. So he pulls in a bunch of that stuff, but uh, this is Moonhawk. Yes. 
So this, this next one, um, so, oh my God, back in 1986 was really my first time in Vermont. I uh, came up to visit uh, for a mutual friend of ours um, that was living in Waitsfield. And uh, on, on the way back, I uh, traveled down 100 and stopped, I think it's, uh, you know, there are falls, Mossland Falls, I don't really remember the name of it. Um, but there's a picture of me standing on this moss-covered log. Um, and I'm just, some, you know, I was in my early 20s, and I'm like, this is a, there was a sign down the bottom that talked about um, all the people that had crossed over uh, or been injured uh, on the falls and don't walk out onto the falls. I was actually kind of amused by it, so I walked out onto the falls and posed. <laughs> that, that, that picture I've had uh, ever since, and when I came back up here, um, to settle down uh, into Vermont. I uh, sought that out and, uh, and I finally found it. And, and at the time, uh, I was actually recording something else uh, in my project studio and uh, somehow it just, while I was recording, I started writing a song. Don't ask me how that happened, but uh, this is called Waterfall. It's um, about reclaiming my youth.
This is um, so I, I discussed Jesse Bruchak, who's also no vegan, uh, and um, he's on a lifelong mission of preserving the language, which is absolutely amazing. But I, I had somebody singing with us in the Blackhawk Singers who eventually had to move down to Florida. And while we were all having our minds fried with language just coming at us, because in the Abenaki language, you can't double talk. Everything is specific. You conjugate nouns. And, and depending on the prefix or the suffix you put on to whatever you're doing, you know, you, 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 so you have to listen to what somebody's saying to understand the actual sentence. So it's, it's a language that's meant to be listened to. Um, Steve uh, Tingley uh, was writing songs. He probably was one weekend. He wrote three or four different songs, uh, and he had the luxury of having a check to make sure all the grammar was correct. So he was absorbing everything that was coming at him and writing out uh, songs at the same time with proper Abenaki grammar. This is a this is a canoe song. Um, so just to speak to the prof to how profound it is what he's writing. As we paddle upstream to the St. Francis River inside the Birch Park Canoe, this is the Indian way of travel. We travel by canoes for hunting and fishing grounds. You know, I mean, he's not just saying simple expressions, he's really spelling it out. Anyways, this is a We Wild and Total Gone Canoe Song.
second and first song I wrote in Vermont. Uh, this is, uh, I refer to this as an Adele song. So this is called What Are We Doing? Kind of funny because your conga playing influenced my guitar playing, 
and, and I actually had a chance to record him. And uh, when I listened to what he was doing, I had to re record my guitar tracks because he was actually, I was actually like doing stuff that he was doing with my right hand. And I'm like, wow, this is pretty cool. But he, he's the one that inspired me to, uh, to write some songs about contemporary issues. And uh, this is a song called White Dog. I'll leave it up to you as to uh, who I'm talking about. But it's a story of a dog traveling around, um, creating trouble in, in Dakina, our land. And um, yeah, the, the hook to this is uh, it's called Maha Gao Bolak Meliki, which means gather and stand strong. But 
for some reason the state stepped in and said, well, they're not native to this area, so they got to go. <clears throat> so they, well, my story will tell you. I called it eight swans. There is a small lake in my hometown where eight swans lived almost year round. They were a symbol of beauty and a symbol of peace. They lived on the shore facing the east. They gave joy to the young and joy to the old, and they had lived there for eight years, as I was told. But the state stepped in one summer day and said these swans must go away. I begged and I pleaded to save their dear lives, but to no avail, for the state is always right. First they shipped them to Texas to a safe park to be, but these swans returned just wanting to be free. I drummed and I played on the state house lawn in hopes that the governor would give them another dawn. But he sent his men in with high-powered guns. In a day's time, their job was done. Now these swans' spirit live in a much better place, and our ancestors enjoy their beauty and grace. I think of them often. I feel that I failed, for I am one voice in a very large world. <clears throat> and I did. I, I called the governor's office, and he referred me to the Fish and Game Department, and the Fish and Game Department referred me to another department, and then I was referred back to another department, and this was a number of years ago. I, I think this one was, this happened in 98. Uh, so anyway, there, their spirit flies free in another place now, and I'm sure they're, they're making uh, our ancestors happy. <clears throat> I often was told that I was not native, uh, and there's a lot of reasons behind that, and, and that, there again we're getting into political stuff, and I don't want to go political, but if you don't know too much about the eugenics program here in Vermont, I would suggest you Google it on, on, online and, and read up about it, because <clears throat> a lot of my ancestors hid in plain sight. We, we, literally hid in plain sight. And so even my grandfather on my father's side uh, told me that we were not native, even though I can prove that his mother came from Three Rivers, Quebec. Mm -hmm. She was full-blooded at Mackey. So I wrote this, am I native? I am, am I native? I do not know. For some say yes and others say no. I feel my native pride inside but I'm not sure this pride is mine. My head is high, but my spirit is low. My heart says yes, but my mind says no. I cannot prove my native line, for all my older relatives are on the other side. I only know that what I've been told, yet feel my native path was stole. <clears throat> I'm not a wannabe, for that's for sure. My skin is white, but I feel red like you. If I should find that I'm not red, then the disappointment I would dread. I walk my path, I know it's true, but how could I continue if I'm not red like you? For, some, for maybe one day I will learn, for this is what my heart now yearns. Am I native? I do not know. I hope it's yes, but it could not be so. I have uh, long since documented my my native side, I, I, when I joined Mohegan, I submitted my paperwork that was about that thick. I get it on three sides of my, my family, two on my mother's and one on my father's. My great-grandfather on my mother's side was an Abnaki guide up in Swanton, and I, I have pictures of him sitting in an Abnaki camp, along with his son and one of my uncles, or great-uncles. So, I am who I am. <laughs> I, I call this one the circle. The circle is a path in, my, in life that most of us walk each day. Some choose to stay on this path while others walk away. The circle has no beginning, the circle has no end. When walking the circle straight and true, the circle will never bend. It will teach you how to listen 
and to what it has to say. It has so many lessons, you cannot learn them in a day. Well, that's for sure. From east to south, from north to west, the circle has it all. Do not be afraid to walk, for it will never let you fall. It will show you how to learn respect, to care, and how to love. For Creator has given us this circle from high up above. To walk it in my daily life, for this he has given me. And when I walk my circle, I know that I am free. <laughs> Days gone by. As the snow falls, <laughs> and, and, and in Vermont it seems like it's falling all the time. <laughs> As the snow falls and it tells us it's time for us to sleep, I think about the year just passed with all its valleys and peaks. I think about the troubled times and friends who went astray. I remember the time we sat and drummed and laughed throughout the summer day. Of walks we took by the lake shore and trips we had to make, I think of the babies that were born and the friends who passed away. And as this year draws to an end, as they always do, we look towards the, we look forward to the spring again, and know we and know what we should do. For nothing lasts forever, not snow, not life, nor dark of night. For as we walk our path of life, Creator will keep it right. <laughs> Seasons of life. Seasons, seasons bring us many gifts. The quiet time is a time of, to wish, to allow us to slow down from our fast pace, to see the love in each other's face. The springtime brings <coughs> us a time of renew, green grasses and gardens and new births too. Summer allows us for the busy time of the year when each of us run from here to there. As fall comes and harvest is the year, a time to give thanks for our gifts of the year, to reflect on our lives and what we hold dear, for some will hold material gains in their heart, like money and greed and power to start, while others will live day to day and let the seasons of life show them the way. special to me. I walk it on our mother as I walk it free. The path I walk has stories to tell. Just listen to the wind and listen well. The breeze will tell of my people and land of giving and caring and offering a helping hand. The path I walk has meaning for me from its valleys and rivers to its mighty peaks. But if I don't learn and listen well, I could be in for a big, big fall. You thought I was going to say something else, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> the signs are there and the lessons ring true. So now it's up to me and you to take care of our mother as she has cared for me. And maybe the path I walk will keep me free. <laughs> Remember when we were kids and used to play all day? Remember how we used to talk and laugh at things we say? Remember how we stayed up all night to watch another dawn? Remember all the things we did, some right and some so very wrong? Remember how long the summers last and never seem to end? Remember how close we were, you were my bestest friend? Remember when you moved away and how we said goodbye? Remember how we hugged that day? We both had tears in our eyes. Remember all the things we ever did or things we ever said? I must say this to you, my sis. Of all the sisters I could have had, I would have loved you the best. Mm -hmm. 